Today we're going to do a radiator replacement on a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country 3.8 liter. Would be exactly the same for a 3.3 liter. About nine months ago I replaced the antifreeze and the upper and lower radiator hose, changed the clamps out. So today I'll be saving the antifreeze and reusing it. But this would be a great time to put on new hoses and new antifreeze in the system. I'm not going to spend any time on how you get the hoses off. I've watched a few YouTube videos on how to replace radiators and there is some out there for exactly a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country. I noticed that on this particular vehicle I've got a one-piece dual fan unit while the videos show that you have two individual fans. Apparently that was kind of a mid-year change so First thing I want to do is get it up in the air, get jack stands under it, put chocks on the back wheels, drain that antifreeze out of there. Got a radiator made in Indonesia. We'll see how that works out. Got the car up in the air. I'm down underneath using one of my kids sled as a big splash pan to collect the uh, antifreeze. I'm getting ready to remove the lower radiator hose from the metal tube. I've left the radiator cap on hopefully to reduce the speed at which this comes out. Actually with a little bit of patience you can Let it out of there fairly slow. It's going to take a little while, but you know, keep it up. There is a petcock on the other side which you could use. Okay, got it completely drained. Didn't take too long, wasn't too bad. We'll get that other clamp up there loose, get this lower radiator hose off. One side note, there is this black uh, tube, metal tube, that your lower radiator hose connects to. Apparently those tend to rust out right there towards the bottom where water tends to gather, salt water especially. Uh, they're about $25. be a good time to replace that if you wanted to. Got the two radiator hoses off, all the fluids drained out. Now we're going to take off these Phillips head screws, there's a one bolt there and then a fastener that you pry up. Let's get those off and get this piece removed. Pry those up and out. It's a bit of a puzzle piece, but get this little unit out, set that aside. Now you've got good access to get this overflow tube off, and then we're going to take those two bolts out, those two bolts over here out, and it looks like uh, a bolt here for the fan holder, and another bolt here for the fan holder. So let's get those out. Work the fill tube out, set it off to the side. Looks like there's not a whole lot of play here, but you might want to mark where this was. So when you put it back in, the hood will uh, latch properly. We've got that assembly removed now, lay it off to the side. Might want to put something against your bumper here so you don't get scratched if you end up moving it around. Okay, next we're going to get in here and remove the electrical connectors for the fans. This is a dual fan unit, all one assembly. Going to remove that little red plug, squeeze it, pull it off. Don't actually remove that little red thing, you just slide it 
back out of the way, then you can squeeze it, get that plug off. Often easier said than done, but I was able to get a flat screwdriver right in here, push down real hard, and this red, red lever popped out. The one over on this side, I'm going to try and get a screwdriver, maybe a smaller one in under here, and then pull up real hard, get that red clip to slide up toward me. Okay, that's what you're working with. Once that red clip is slid back, just kind of squeeze and tug and somehow or another it'll just come off. Got both the electrical connectors off. Now there are two bolts that I can see, one there and one on the other side over here. Once you've got these bolts out, down in here there's a slide connection. This fan assembly should just lift straight up and out. We'll see. Yeah, just lifted straight up and out. Uh, there's those bolts for holding it and then basically this fits down in a little wedge down there and that's all that's holding it in. Get that out of the way. Remove this little rubber piece here. Just pops right out. Okay, on the other videos that I've seen down in here, there's a couple of bolts that are holding this radiator to the uh, condenser coil for the AC. But in this particular unit, it appears to be some kind of a little clamp down in here. So we're going to take a look at the new radiator to see if we can get a clue. All right, here on the new radiator, here's that clamp. It looks like if you squeeze this together, then that unit would push out. So you somehow got to get your fingers in there, squeeze these together, and this should push out. Yeah, that's all it takes. Reach down in there, got to get on each side, top and bottom, squeeze it, and then the radiator will just push right out. Okay, the next step was just to lift the AC condenser unit up and out of a little hook that's in the uh, radiator. That was easy on the battery side, but over here on the uh, side with the AC hoses, it just doesn't want to quite come out of there, so I'm kind of fighting that one. Get a real bright light and look down in there and just try and get that condenser to come up and out of the hook. It was a little bit of fight over here on this side, but I finally got the condenser coil that peg to lift up and out of that hook on the radiator. Now the radiator should come out of there. There's a little flexible rubber sleeve that goes on the side of the radiator and then kind of wraps around the uh, condenser hoses. So you're going to have to kind of get that out of the way before it will lift up. Just reach down in there and pop this off of its pegs, get it out of there. Now the radiator should come out. Okay, I've got it out. It's a little bit of a fight to get the uh, lower radiator hose tube around the air conditioning tube there. And then keep this little hook right here from grabbing things on the way up. But it will eventually come out. Now here's this piece that I reached in there and popped off of these. It slips over these. But if you can reach in there and get that off first, get it up and out, get that out of the way, that'll help it come around these tubes here. Got another one of these that you're going to pop off of here and transfer over to the new radiator. Get it ready to go back in. There are actually a couple little tabs you have to kind of push that down, then it'll come out of there real easy. You could force it out, but you can bend this down right here. It'll pop right out. Got the old radiator completely out. 
I'm going to do a little side by side comparison here. Looks good except one thing concerns me. This one has these studs or pipes sticking out the top of it and my old one does not. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to try popping this rubber piece on the side over here that the battery's on. On the other side, since that has to go around those tubes, I'm going to start by putting it over the tubes and then later see if I can snap it onto these latches here. Got the radiator down in there. I've got these uh, plastic side pieces in there. And now we're going to try and get the condenser coil to lift up and go into the hooks on the radiator. It's going to be hard to see this, but getting that condenser to hook back into the radiator was a real bear. I don't know what to tell you. I finally, I don't know, reached down in, had my hand under the condenser, pulling up on it, pushing down on the radiator, finally got lucky, popped in there. So once you've once you fought that battle and you've got the condenser hooked into the radiator and those two hooks, the next step is to squeeze these two together and that'll snap right there and snap on the other side. Down at the bottom of the radiator, there's two clips. That's where the fan slides in down at the bottom. And then the fan's gonna slide down over that and then get bolted in there. Okay, disaster has struck. Uh, this radiator looked close. I was concerned about these studs that were sticking up. They do drop drop right over these holes here. But uh, on the other system, these went into those holes. And I wouldn't be too bad if those worked and they went down and they lined up with the clips down there. But unfortunately it won't go down far enough and then you can't even get the bolts in. So this radiator is not going to work. Okay, an important uh, find, discovery, is that this top piece that has these studs on it is removable. You can take those two bolts off and two on the other side. That top piece will come off. That'll solve the problem with giving you the rib for this to snap into. And I think it's going to allow the dual fan unit to slide down in far enough that you can get the bolts on it. So we'll see how that works. Again, we're going to want to take this top bracket off, get rid of these posts that stick up and that should give us the room to slip those fans down. At that point I don't think it'll matter whether there's one or two clips down here, it'll slide into one of them and the other one just be unused. I'll have to admit that the radiator did come with a little sheet and it does talk about sometimes you need to remove that top bracket and sometimes you don't, so read the instructions. All right, we're going to go ahead and take that top bracket off of this radiator. Apparently that's for vehicles that have the two individual cooling fans where this model has the single cooling fan. So we're going to take that top bracket off.
like they couldn't afford to give you these two little clips here. Sometimes you stay, sometimes you turn your back to me There's a world outside that the dog can't 